Today we are hanging around in the shop and uh, I decided to do a video on the technical specs of the AR-15 bolt carrier. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over a bolt carrier group, go over its parts, what the specs of those parts should be and how those parts work. So in my hand here we have an AR-15 or M16 bolt carrier group. This one is nickel boron coated. Nothing special about the nickel boron. I just happen to have it in the shop. So we'll go over the BCG in its assembled form. This here is your carrier body, your bolt carrier. This here is your gas key. This here is your cam pin. And this here is your bolt face or your bolt head. So on the side here you have your firing pin retaining pin and your firing pin rides inside the bolt pocket and the bolt here. So that's a basic description of a AR-15 bolt carrier group. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start taking this carrier apart and start talking about the parts. So the first thing I like to do is remove the firing pin retaining pin here. I use a dental pick, that's just what works for me. Once that's removed, the firing pin drops right out the back. Cam pin rotates, comes out of the cam pin pocket. Bolt face or bolt head comes out of the carrier. Now your carrier is stripped. So, let's go over the differences between a full auto bolt carrier group and a semi auto bolt carrier. This is a fully automatic bolt carrier and the difference being is the rear of the carrier body here is fully masked. You have from here to here solid metal and a full even rear carrier tail. The reason being is this section here right here on your carrier is what trips the full automatic sear in a fully automatic M16. So this comes forward, trips the sear, sear dumps the hammer, so on and so forth. And that's what controls the timing in fully automatic fire. A semi-auto bolt carrier is relieved here. You'll see that the carrier body in the back is not full length here. It's not full mass. It's relieved right here at the bottom half. They relieve about half of that mass. And the reason that they do that is so if this is in a fully automatic gun no sear will ever be able to get tripped by the carrier body down there so that's why it's a semi-automatic carrier because even if it's in a fully automatic gun it will not trip the auto sear that's the basic differences between a full auto carrier and a semi-auto carrier now let's go over the carrier body itself this here is your carrier body these here, these little serrations in the side of the carrier, those are your forward assist notches. So if your carrier fails to seat in the battery, you can push your forward assist. It will engage the notch and push your carrier into battery. The three holes here that you see on the side of the bolt carrier group, there's a hole here, a hole here, and a hole here. This hole is your firing pin retaining pin hole. These three holes are your gas vents. So once this bolt cycles and comes out of battery, excess gas from the pressure pocket leaves those vents and leaves out the ejection port. On the top of the carrier, we have your gas key or your carrier key. The carrier key is installed with grade 8 fastener screws. They're just Allen head screws. These screws need to be torqued to 35 to 40 inch pounds. That is specification, 35 to 40 inch pounds. Some people will argue that that doesn't matter or they go higher or whatnot, but I like to keep it within spec because that's what works. Um, once you are torqued to 35, 40 inch pounds, factory, you will have two stakes on each side of the key into the screw head. If you're doing a field repair, if your carrier key comes loose or a screw head breaks and you need to replace your screws, you will retort to 35 to 40 inch pounds. And if you do not have the proper tooling to properly give a factory staking like so, you will take a stake punch and do three stakes on the top of each carrier key screw. 
Three swedges around each screw head will be a proper field repair. Okay, moving on with the bolt. This is obviously your bolt recess. This is your charge handle notch. So when you pull your charge handle, the charge handle engages here and pulls the carrier back to charge the gun. This is your cam pin pocket with your cam surfaces to cam the bolt in and out of battery while the gun's cycling. Firing pin retaining pin hole. And this down here, this your hammer rides in here and strikes the firing pin. So down here, during cyclic operation, this section here is what cocks your hammer. So your hammer will strike your pin, carrier will cycle back, cock the hammer right on that flat. Come forward, strip around, and so on and so forth. So that there is the basics, specs of a bolt carrier, the, the actual bolt carrier. So let's move on to the actual bolt head itself. Here's your bolt head. So, on a typical AR-15 bolt, you have your gas rings, your extractor, and your plunger ejector right here. It's your plunger ejector. This is your extractor, your extractor hook, your bolt face, your extractor pin, and your plunger ejector roll pin. So, now we're going to strip the bolt. First thing I like to do is take the gas rings off. Now just bear with me. Now one thing you should know about gas rings, gas rings are a directional component. If you hold a gas ring in your hand like so and feel the edges of each side of the gas ring, you'll feel a knife edge and a round edge. The sharp edge or knife edge of the gas ring goes to the rear of the bolt tail, faces to the rear. Finish getting these rings off here and we'll move on. Another, another note about gas rings, your gas ring gap. The gap here on your gas ring needs to be a minimum of 47 thousandths to get proper gas ring compression. Okay, now we're going to remove the extractor. We just take a punch, put some tension on it, push out the extractor pin, the extractor comes free. Now we're going to remove the plunger ejector. I use a tool. I have to do a lot of bolt work. I go over a lot of bolts in my shop, so I use the proper tooling to make my life easier. Get it depressed, punch out the pin. Once our roll pin's out, we can now take out the plunger ejector. Spring comes out. And now our bolt is stripped. Okay, in a stripped bolt, this is your extractor pocket. These are your bolt lugs. Each one of these lugs is what goes in your barrel extension, turns and locks up. The two bottom lugs here, these two lugs here on the bolt face are your stripper lugs. Those are the lugs that strip rounds from the magazine during cyclic operation and feeding. So that's a stripped bolt. Now that our bolt is stripped, we'll go over firing pin protrusion. So what we'll do is we'll take our firing pin and our stripped bolt. Firing pin goes into the bolt and seat it up against the bolt tail just like it would as if the hammer stroke the pin, struck the pin and seated it and struck the primer to ignite the round. Once that is seated, I use a gauge. Proper firing pin protrusion on an AR-15 bolt carrier or AR-15 bolt, proper protrusion is 28 to 36 thousandths. So you need to be a minimum of 28 thousandths and a maximum of 36 thousandths. I have a gauge with two notches milled in the top and bottom that allows me to quickly check my protrusion. There's minimum. So I'm hitting on minimum, I know I'm clear. There's maximum. I'm not hitting, so I know I'm within spec. If your firing pin protrusion is shy, you can file the back of the bolt tail here and that will allow you to achieve proper protrusion. If your firing pin protrusion is too long, 
you need to reduce the hemispherical tip of the firing pin here. You need to remove material here to reduce the protrusion. Firing pin tip needs to be hemispherical in shape. So that's firing pin protrusion. Now let's go over the extractor. AR-15 extractor. Extractor spring and extractor spring bushing. There's a bushing inside this spring here. So this is your stripped extractor. This is your extractor hook. Extractor hooks must be positive in engagement, meaning the hook needs to be a positive angle when it's extracting that round so it stays engaged into the rim of the casing. Okay, extractor spring and buffer. You'll see a lot of extractors that either don't have a buffer or they'll have a donut, a rubber O-ring. We'll go over the O-ring in a minute. I suggest if your spring does not have a buffer, I suggest you get an extractor spring buffer and install that. That will prevent you from over camming out and slipping off the uh, rim of the casing. So you want your extractor hook groove to be nice and square, uh, have a nice depth to it to have positive rim engagement. Now let's go over extractor cam out. Rule of Gundam. You want 15 to 25 thousandths of an inch of extractor cam out for reliable extraction. The way we check cam out is we install our extractor back into the bolt. And we take our dial calipers this is how I do it. There's different ways of doing it, but you measure from this lug here to the lug on the extractor. Right now, we are at 82 thousandths, 82 and a half thousandths. Then we'll take a casing and we'll snap the casing into the bolt face, like so, and we will measure from the same two points of contact, from this lug here to the lug on the extractor. This is telling me it's 87 thousandths. So we were at 82 thousandths and now we're at 87 thousandths. That's telling me that I have 5 thousandths of an inch of extractor cam out. So cam out on this extractor, on this bolt, is definitely shy. Now a lot of extractors will work with cam outs under 10 thousandths. It's just a reliability issue. It's a, uh, it's a guarantee that that extractor's tuned right when you have 15 to 25 thousandths cam out. It's a guarantee that it's going to extract that round out of the chamber as long as everything else is in order. Okay, that's extractor cam out. If your extractor cam out is shy, you can file the limiting surface here. Filing the limiting surface there will allow the tip of the extractor to cam in more on the bolt face, which will allow it to cam out more when the casing snaps in. So we file here. We do not file on the surface in the bolt. The extractor is cheaper than the bolt, so we work on the cheapest part. So you will file the limiting surface right here, this surface here. You will file until you have proper cam out. Okay, now let's uh, go over the cam pin. Cam pin's pretty straightforward. Cam's in and out of the pocket of the bolt carrier here, which cams your bolt carrier in and out of battery. So it rides in the cam pin pocket along the cam surfaces there. One thing I like to check on cam pins is that the heads here, the length of the heads, are under 300 thousandths. This one is 294 thousandths. I like that. Anything over 300 thousandths, I have found that you can create wear while that carrier is going in and out of battery. The cam pin can chafe the side of the cam pin pocket and the side of the charge handle groove in the upper. So I like that to be under 300 thousandths, that width. One other thing about the extractors, here's an O-ring. This is what I was talking about. You'll see extractor springs with O-rings. I do not like those. 
They can make it difficult for the extractor to snap over the rim. And as I have found that these rubber O-rings, I have found that these are band-aids for extractors that do not have enough cam out. Most extractors that I deal with that come with these rubber O-rings do not have proper cam out. I'll toss the O-ring, file the surface, get cam out proper, works like a champ. Okay, now let's put the bolt back together. Let's start reassembling. First we'll put the plunger ejector spring in. Plunger ejector. We'll use the tool here. Get that plunger ejector depressed. Make sure our pinhole is clean for pin alignment. Okay, a lot of these AR-15 carriers come with what most people like to call roll pins. Technically, most of them are spring pins. It's a pin like this. It's hollow in the middle and it has a groove through the uh, vertical plane of the pin. You can see here, there's a groove right there and it's hollow in the middle. It's like this. That's a spring pin. So it springs like so. An actual roll pin rolls over on itself. When installing your spring pin back into your bolt carrier group, you want to make sure that your spring groove, the slit in the spring pin, is at a 90 degree angle to the function of the plunger ejector. So here's your spring pin, here's your plunger ejector. You want it hitting here. You want it to be structurally hitting here. If you put the spring in parallel, the groove parallel to the way the plunger ejector moves, you can crush an end in like that and that can lead to an ejector malfunction. So make sure that the groove of the spring is 90 degrees to the function of the plunger ejector. Get this reseated. Once you reseat the pin, make sure the pin is recessed. Make sure the pin is below the bolt surfaces here, the body surfaces. Plunger ejector needs to be slightly recessed from the bolt face as you see here. Plunger ejector is recessed from here. If that is not researched, if that is not recessed, excuse me, you can have ejection malfunctions. So now the plunger ejector is back in, we'll put the extractor back on. Just put it in an extractor pocket, replace the pin. Gas rings, remember, knife edge to the rear of the bolt tail. I just feel each ring until I catch that knife edge and I know to put it to the rear of the tail. When you install your gas rings, make sure that your gas ring gaps are not in alignment. Spread them around evenly on the bolt tail like so. You can see here that we have a gap here gap here and a gap there. If those are in alignment, you risk gas leakage. Okay, now that our bolt's back together, we'll go ahead and put the bolt back in the carrier. Just simply, oh, one, here's a note. When you are lubing up your AR-15 bolt, no lube on the gas rings rearward. You want this to create a tight seal in your pressure pocket in the bolt carrier. This is a non-frictional part. This doesn't ride on anything. Wet, gunky carbon is harder to clean off than dry carbon. It's just a tip. You do not need lube from the gas rings rearward. Bolt will go back in to the carrier. Cam pin goes back in. Rotate your cam pin. Drop your firing pin back in, like so. And then put your firing pin retaining pin back in. And that is how you reassemble your bolt carrier group. Now one thing you can do to test your gas rings to test if they are worn. You can take your bolt face here and you can A, hang the carrier by the bolt. 
If it doesn't drop freely under its own weight, your gas rings have not worn to a, the point that they need to be replaced. You can also take the bolt out and set it up like so. If it does not just fall like that under its own weight, your gas rings are still good and they do not need to be replaced. Some carriers, people will say, oh, mine drops freely and I don't have any problems. It's potential. Those gas rings are wearing and you are potentially leaking gas forward of those rings, which is fouling up forward of the gas rings. And eventually you will leak enough gas that you will short stroke. So anyways, I hope you all found this video very informative. That is the basic specs, the techno technical specs, the technical aspects of the AR-15 bolt carrier group. Thank you for tuning in and uh, stay tuned for the next CivTac YouTube video.